Good afternoon and welcome to the Michigan Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Now your camera microphone are off right now so we cannot see or hear you. But if you wanna communicate with us, please use the Q&A button that is at the bottom of your screen to talk to the presenters at any time during this session. There also will be more sessions to actually um, attend today as well as so if you wanna sign up for those after you finish up, please do that. Now the particular session that you're in right now, it will be able to be seen in video form once again, after we finish up in about a week at strivescan.com backslash Michigan. So that's the few housekeeping things I'm gonna cover before we get started this evening. Now let's turn over to our first representative and it's gonna be Southern Illinois University. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share our university. I'm just gonna go ahead and get my screen pulled up here. Okay. Hopefully everyone can see that okay. So we are Southern Illinois University Carbondale, and this is a little bit about our university. We are an Illinois public research university located in Carbondale, Illinois. So really more Southern in the state, we're closer to cities like St. Louis, Memphis, and Nashville. And so our undergraduate student population is around 10,000 students, and we have over a hundred different countries represented with the international student population that we have as well. And by the time you count our graduate students, law students and medical school students, we have about 13,000 students. And so since we're a smaller mid-sized university, this means that we're able to keep class sizes pretty small. So right now we have a student to faculty ratio of 13 to one. So most of our classes fall between um, like that 20 uh, student range in our classes. So this is really great tying into that research component um, because students as early as their freshman year can begin doing research. And so with those smaller class sizes, you're really gonna get to know your faculty on a really personalized level and hopefully get to take advantage of some of the opportunities for research within your academic department. We have over 200 academic programs. So probably anything that you can think of or that you're interested in, there's probably a fit for you here. Um, and let's see, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Oh, too fast, whoa. Okay, there we go. Um, so one thing that's really awesome about SIU is that over 90% of our students receive some form of financial assistance through our university. We do our best to keep our programs and our tuition at an affordable rate for students. And so a couple of ways that we do this is we offer in-state tuition for all domestic students. So even if you are not a resident of Illinois, as long as you're a domestic student, you are charged our in-state rate. We also offer what's called our legacy tuition rate, and that is a discounted tuition rate for students whose parent or legal guardian graduated from SIU Carbondale. And then on top of that, over $10 million um, worth of scholarships and grants are granted annually. Um, so we're going to talk about some of these opportunities. So for freshmen, we offer what's called merit-based scholarships. And these are scholarships that you do not apply for, but you're automatically evaluated when you send us your transcript for admission. And so these are the different tiers, and um, these are awarded based off of GPA, and then you're awarded them for all four years that you attend with us. And so definitely keep working hard this semester and next year, because the higher your GPA is, the higher that your scholarship offer is going to be from us. Our highest merit-based scholarship is our university excellence. And so for students admitted by November 30th, that is $7,500 for all four years, um, or $5,500 if you're admitted after November 30th. And then once um, you qualify for university excellence, you're then invited to apply for a chancellor scholarship, which is our full ride scholarship. We do require freshmen to live on campus their first year with us. And so there's a lot of great things with our campus housing and in our residence halls. Included in our housing costs is our anytime meal plan. So that's nothing additional that you purchase. And it is what it sounds like. As long as they are open, you can go however and whenever um, you need to go. Um, we also offer what's called living learning communities. So these um, are basically residence halls that are reserved for individuals either within an academic department. There are interest-based groups, population-based groups. And so if you're really looking to have a sense of community and be around like-minded individuals or people who share the same aspirations as you, you can choose to live in a living learning community. And then um, included in all of our housing is utilities, cables, internet, computer labs, the rooms are furnished. Um, so you have everything that you really need with your residence halls. So we are the Salukis, which we are super proud of because we are the only Salukis in the nation. And if you didn't know, Salukis are a type of Egyptian hunting dog. And we actually have some Salukis that come and visit us. That is always my favorite day of the week when we get to see the real Salukis. And so we are um, NCAA Division I sports. We are part of the Missouri Valley Conference. Our football team actually just won and are going on to, um, I think, 
the next level in their finals, which is really exciting. Um, and then we have some other, uh, of course, like athletics teams as part of our athletics division. So that's always a lot of fun for students to get to experience on campus. So let's talk about cost. And so right now, this is our current estimate for a year. So including tuition, fees, room and board, it's about $25,500. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. If you kind of already know what your unweighted GPA is, you can kind of do an estimate of what you know, your overall cost for the year might look like. Once students are admitted to the university, they're also able to apply for our general scholarship application, which applies them for over 600 di different institutional scholarships. And so as far as next steps and what you need to do to apply is we ask that you just complete our online application, send us your official transcripts. And even though it says send official ACT, SAT scores, we're actually test optional. So you can ignore that. We literally just need that application and your transcripts. And then we can process that admissions decision for you. So I definitely recommend check us out on social media at all the universities that you're looking at. Go look at their social media. It is a really great way to get to know the people who are there, the spaces that are there, and maybe get a little bit more of a personalized feel. So definitely check us out there. And then this is my contact information. Please send me an email, give me a call, and I would love to talk about your college plans and any questions that you have about our university. And I'll also put information for campus visits in the chat. Thank you so much. Kennedy, thank you so much for sharing information with us. Next, we're going to have University of Illinois, Chicago. Great, thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here this afternoon. My name is Samantha. I'm a representative from the University of Illinois at Chicago. Um, I am so excited to share a little bit more about UIC with you all today. Um, I think there are a ton of things that make UIC a great institution, but I'm going to use my time to point out a few key things about UIC that really make us unique. Now, first is our location. We are located in Chicago less than a mile away from the Loop, which is where a lot of famous Chicago landmarks are located. A lot of large companies and businesses are located right in the Loop. If you've been to Chicago before, you've probably spent time there. You can see the red portion of the map here is where our campus is located. The highlighted portion is our East Campus. It is where our undergraduate students spend the majority of their time. But we also have a west side of campus, which is located in the Illinois Medical District um, near three very large hospitals. So for those of you interested in the health sciences, you'd have tons of opportunities to shadow and volunteer, get patient care hours there. And we also have a south side of campus, which houses our athletic stadiums. We do have 20 Division I sports teams. Now, even though we're located in Chicago, we still offer a very traditional college campus. We have beautiful academic buildings, a quad, 10 residence halls, a union, even more than 5,000 trees. So you're really getting the best of both worlds, a large city to you know, take advantage of, but also that college experience. Speaking of, our students truly do treat the city of Chicago as their campus. They take advantage of everything Chicago has to offer from job and internship opportunities to a never ending list of fun experiences. Now at UIC, we're also very committed to both academic excellence and access. You can see we're ranked as one of the best public colleges in the US, um, but we're also committed to academic access. We want all of our students to be successful regardless of the major or program they decide to pursue. And while we are the largest institution in Chicago and have nearly 100 different majors and programs, we ensure access through things like small class sizes and the availability of our faculty. UIC, at, at UIC, we really believe that our students should learn both in and outside the classroom. Our students are constantly learning outside the classroom through things like jobs and internships, as I mentioned, also through study abroad. You can actually study abroad on any continent as a UIC student, and also through research. And this slide focuses on research just a bit more. UIC is a research one institution. Um, we engage in the highest level of research activity, spending more than $400 million in sponsorship sponsored research programs every single year. And as a UIC student, you'd get to take part in that research as early as your first semester on campus. 
Another way our students learn both in and outside the classroom is through their interactions with their peers. UIC is considered one of the most welcoming and diverse campuses in the US. And actually in 2020, we are ranked in the top five most diverse campuses by US News and World Report. Our students come from different cultural backgrounds, have different socioeconomic experiences, race and gender identities, religious beliefs, and so much more. And that really frames the kind of conversations our students are having with one another. About 40% of our students are first generation college students, and we have no ethnic or cultural majority among our student body. We do recognize that with a diverse student body, um, all of our students learn differently, need access to different resources, and we strive really hard to support our student body by giving access to many different cultural centers and support services. They offer a place for students to connect with one another, but also receive individualized advising, tutoring, help finding scholarships, or filling out financial aid applications. UIC is also a campus that is commitment to so committed to social good. We are well known for students that want to give back to their communities. And a lot of our classes do have community service or outreach components. Um, at UIC, our goal is really to give students the tools they need to give back to the industry that they decide to pursue after they leave UIC. Now, I told you a lot of great things about UIC. Um, if those are things that you're looking for in an institution, then we certainly hope you apply. And I'm gonna show you just a little bit about our application process. We are on the common application. We will ask for a high school transcript. We are test optional for the next two years at least. So you won't need to provide an SAT or ACT score. There is a $60 application fee, but we are happy to provide a fee waiver. If that fee presents a challenge, you can just email us and we would be happy to provide one. Everything you see on the screen right now are things that are considered during the holistic review process. Um, and all things are um, very important during ap the application. So definitely make sure to start early and um, make sure every portion of your application is strong. My final topic for today is just tuition and fees. You'll see that in-state and non-resident price. I point out in-state pricing because all of my out-of-state students will be automatically reviewed for a scholarship that brings the cost down much closer to that in-state student price. I mentioned you'll be automatically reviewed for that scholarship. You'll also be automatically reviewed for all of our scholarships. So we try to make it easy on the student, no need to apply separately. You'll see a bunch of other costs listed on this screen. These are optional or estimates. I do just wanna point out that it is not required to live on campus. Many students prefer to live off campus, uh, maybe get an apartment with friends and that is an option as well. Now that was just a brief overview of UIC, but please don't hesitate to reach out to learn more. I will leave some information in the chat for where you can contact us and learn a little bit more. Um, thanks again, um, Have and thank you. Thank you so much, Samantha, for staying information about uh, UIC. Uh, remember, if you do have questions for any of our representatives, please put those questions in the Q&A area and they can respond to them after they finish with their presentations. Next, we're going to have Manchester University. All right, welcome everybody. Thank you guys for having me. Um, let's see here. There we go. All right, so my name is Garrett Schieferstein. Uh, I'm a 2019 graduate of Manchester University and I currently work in the Office of Admissions as an admissions counselor. Um, I'll take you through a couple of uh, information panels about Manchester University. Uh, first and foremost, we're a small school. We're located in North Manchester, Indiana. Uh, just about 20 minutes straight west of Fort Wayne. Uh, we were founded by the Church of the Brethren in 1889, and we currently have around 1,500 students, so we are a very small college. Um, average class size here is around uh, 15 to 20 students, so you still have that small class sizes. So you can get to know your professors on a personal level, and 93% of those professors are full-time professors here. 
Um, another statistic that goes into this is that we do not have any teaching assistants. So all of your classes, even from those basic 100 levels your freshman year, will be taught by a full-time uh, professor. Um, we still have representatives from 36 states and 19 countries, even though we are a small school in Indiana, with a 26% uh, student of color population. Uh, a lot of people think that smaller schools means fewer opportunities. That's not the case here. Uh, we still have 70 plus majors in different academic programs for students to participate in. 32% uh, of our students come from first generation college families uh, and 45% of our students participate in travel abroad or study away programs. I believe the national average is one or 2%. So we really try our best to push students out of their comfort zone uh, and travel the globe on their own. Uh, here is the list of all of our majors that we offer here at Manchester. Uh, the ones in green are the ones that are more specialized to Manchester. So we have a special three plus one accounting bachelor's and master's program, uh, a athletic training program, that's the three-year bachelor's, and then a two-year master's program at our Fort Wayne graduate campus. Uh, and then Peace Studies, that's something that we founded back in, I believe, the 1950s. Uh, and that's something that is uh, quite unique to Manchester. Uh, the ones in orange are ones that are newer or revamped majors at Manchester, such as uh, data science and human services. And then the ones in blue are our most popular and prestigious. Uh, we are known as a undergraduate science um, university. So a lot of students do biology chemistry with aims at going into pharmacy, uh, pre-medicine or uh, medicine, optometry, dentistry, stuff like that. Uh, and then also our college of business uh, is one of our larger areas as well with accounting sales and marketing. Uh, we do have a couple of graduate programs that are available here. Uh, we do have a PharmD program, so we have a couple options there. Uh, we have a two-year bachelor's path for that and then a four-year doctorate path, so students uh, can get their PharmD six years after high school. Uh, we also have a Master Pharmacogenomics program, which is a one-year master's program, and then I already talked about the athletic training and Master's of Accountancy programs. One of the biggest things that we focus on here is success rates. 96% uh, of our students have a, a job or are enrolled in grad school six months after graduation. And then our graduate school uh, acceptance rates are, are quite good as well. 95% of psychology graduate students are accepted, are, are accepted into graduate school. Uh, we have an 89% acceptance rate in a medical school over the last 10 years. And then an 86% acceptance rate in the law school. 100% of our athletic training graduates uh, do pass their ACT certification, 99% of them on the first try. Uh, we do require students to live on campus their first three years here at Manchester. Uh, we have a handful of different options. So you have your traditional dorms, East Garver and Schwalm. East and Garver are our two freshman dorms. So you'll still be in a dorm uh, with other incoming freshmen who are in that same social situation you are, uh, where you're just trying to meet people and meet, meet friends right off the bat. Uh, and then we have a couple suite styles, which are kind of like miniature apartments just without a kitchen. Um, so they're a little bit more private, bigger rooms. And then we have conventional apartments on East Street. Uh, for students to live in after freshman year as well. Uh, athletics is a big part about a small school like Manchester. Uh, we are an NCAA Division III school. Um, athletes cannot receive scholarships since we are D3, but we do give every student an academic scholarship, and I'll touch a little bit more on that in a bit. Uh, we always put an emphasis on student athlete, your student first, athlete second. If you do not maintain a cumulative 2.0 college GPA, you will not be eligible to compete in athletics for Manchester. Uh, and we are a member of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, which is a conference made up of schools from Indiana, Ohio, and one school from Kentucky. A couple of highlights is we just built a brand new football stadium that opened in the fall of 2020. We had a spring football season this year due to COVID, so we were able to welcome uh, fans to that and a newly refurbished weight room and fitness center. Uh, financial aid is one of the biggest aspects for families when choosing a college. Uh, Manchester gives 100% of our full-time undergraduate students financial aid. Um, if you Google Manchester University cost online, you'll come up with a number that says $40,000 or $44,000. No one actually pays that amount because we give everyone that full-time aid. On average, families pay about 37% of that advertised sticker price. Uh, and this is all the uh, awards and scholarships that we give out. So like I said, every student that's admitted gets an academic scholarship. The amount of this is then based on your high school GPA. So the low end of this is $12,000 per year with a high end of $22,000 per year 
This is fully guaranteed uh, aid. Uh, we do give out two full rides. Full, this uh, includes your tuition, room, and board. One is for our honors program, and the other one is for our multicultural excellence and leadership program. Uh, we give every student that visits a $500 per year scholarship, so make sure you schedule a visit soon. And then we also give a couple of involvement scholarships, such as music or esports, if you're interested in those two programs. Um, small Connections Award, if you have a family member that graduated or is currently enrolled at the university. And then also a Manchester Grant, which is a pool of fundraised money by the university that we can then further give out to families in need. Um, and our application process is very simple, very straightforward. Um, all we need for you to apply to Manchester is your free online application. We do not charge for any app. You can do that through the Common App or our personal online application, and then your high school transcript. That's all we need. Um, we are test optional. We do not need ACT, SAT test scores. The only reason we'd ever ask for those test scores is if you were applying for our honors program. Um, and we have a very short turnaround. We are in, are in a, uh, a rolling cycle of admissions. So you, we usually get a response back to you within three or four days after receiving your transcript and your application. All right. So thank you guys for having me. If you guys ever have any questions, don't feel free, or sorry, feel free to reach out uh, and we'll help you out ASAP. Thank you. Gary, thank you so much for sharing the information about Manchester. Next, we're gonna have Franklin College. All right, let me get my uh, screen shared real quick. Um, yes. All righty. Everyone see that all right? Not hearing yelling, someone assumes so. Let's get that rolling from the beginning. No, you're um, good. All right, sounds good. Um, so my name's Kyle, I'm here from Franklin College. Um, I wanna tell you a little bit about Franklin um and just our process of things um first i want to introduce myself i'm because i'm the admissions counselor at franklin uh, who will be dealing with students from michigan um so if you're applying for michigan um you're going to be dealing with me unless they change my territory um but here's my contact information my email my phone number um, so if you're watching this and you have any questions about franklin i um, absolutely reach out i'm a 2018 graduate of franklin i was a history and political science major i played tennis i was in greek life i was in residence life so there's not a whole lot that i can't touch on um, and if I wasn't involved in it, in it, I know somebody who was. A little bit about Franklin. Um, so Franklin, um, it's a small school. Uh, we have about a thousand students. Um, they're coming from 17 different states and 10 countries. So, you know, we're kind of all over the map, um, but you're gonna get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention here at Franklin. Our average class size is right around 15. So with that, you're gonna get to know your professors really well, especially those professors that are in your um, specific major. You'll take multiple classes with them. They will know what your professional goals are, what you're involved in. They'll know what you know your week looks like, things like that. I'm mean, gonna develop really close relationships with them. Um, the biggest thing that drew me to Franklin was the fact that Franklin's about 20 minutes south of Indianapolis, and 100% of the students are gonna complete an internship before graduation. Um, so I knew I wanted to go into the history, um, wanted to study history and political science. Being this close to Indy in terms of museums and things like that was huge for me. Uh, but we've got connections with lots of businesses, lots of hospitals, things like that in Indianapolis. Um, so, you know, we've got a lot of connections that can get you in the field and get you that real world experience. But 100% of our students are going to have internships, a graduation requirement. Um, so you're going to get out, you're going to get off campus and get that real world experience. Um, here's our list of majors. So I'm going to pause on this for a second, just so those that are watching kind of look and see if, um, you know, what they're interested in shows up here. Um, some of our highlights. Um, we just built a new science center. It opened fall 2018, um, so just after I graduated. That's going to have state-of-the-art equipment. Um, the lab's designed for each area of study, so biology has its own lab, chemistry has its own lab, um, so on and so forth. So our sciences are a big one. We've got a, um, a very strong business department that routinely feels finish, finishes in the top 10% in that major field test. Um, they're going to get you internships in Indianapolis. Um, our exercise science athletic training programs are very strong. Um, so those are just a couple highlights. Um, all of our programs are good. Um, those are just some of our flagship programs. Uh, we've got a couple different graduate programs, some pre-professional programs as well. Um, we'll let you kind of take a look at those. Um, but I kind of want to talk about why students succeed at Franklin. Um, our faculty are going to put our students first. Um, you know, they're not using Franklin as a springboard to do research or things like that. They're here because they've got this passion about teaching. 
and they want to work with our students. Um, the moment you declare a major here at Franklin, you'll be paired with an academic advisor who will stay with you for all four years. So they will you can help guide you through your four years here at Franklin. They will make sure you're on path, track to graduate. Um, you're going to get individualized attention with your small classes. Um, the smallest class I had was a six person class. We sat you know, in a circle with the professor. He didn't lecture at us. It was very seminar style. It was a really um, great experience for me. Um, we do a 414 schedule. So in the middle, we've got a one month immersive term. So our students either do one class, do one internship or do a study abroad for that month of January. It's the only thing they're focusing on. So they're able to really dive, dive deep in that. Um, and then our first year launch program is really designed to help students transition from high school to college. Um, so that's a big transition, but we're going to assist you in that transition. We're going to create a launch team that's there to help guide you through that. Um, and just work with you just so you know our you know the resources that we have here on campus um, you know franklin it, it, uh, it's a campus that values diversity and inclusion um, you know everyone we want everyone to feel a part of the franklin community um, franklin students are just involved to a t um, you know it's not rare to see someone who's involved in you know six or seven different things it's kind of um, the franklin college way if you want to be a part of something where you're going to really be involved and be part of the community then franklin's a really good place for you um, it's a gorgeous campus, you know, right here in downtown Franklin. So you got that small town feel, but you're just 20 to 30 minutes from Indianapolis. So you're able to get take advantage of that big city opportunities, um, lots of hands-on learning. Um, and, you know, we really want to prepare you for the real world and for your profession. So we're, you know, we're always kind of aiming towards that. Um, you know, about 50% of our campus are student athletes. I, must, I was a tennis player. I still coach tennis. So if any questions about that, holler at me. Um, but we play in the Heartland Conference, so the same conference that Manchester plays in that you just heard from. Um, you know, we're really competitive. We just won conference for men's basketball. We, we're always competitive, you know, across the board. You know, we really pride ourselves on being student athletes, um, you know, student first, but being really competitive on the field, on the court, on the track, um, in the pool, things like that. And of course, you know, the question that people always have um, is what does the cost look like? Um, so if you look at that yellow box over there, you see that total cost coming down to um, right under $45,000. Um, no students paying that out of pocket. Um, you know, it says 99% of our students are receiving financial aid. Um, you know, with that, you know, most students are receiving somewhere between a 15 and 20,000 right off the bat. That's before we get their FAFSA. So we can add grants, loans, things like that. Um, you see our Ben Franklin scholarship over here. We've got um, two full tuition scholarships, but everyone that goes through that process is going to get a heightened scholarship. Um, we have a full ride for journalism. Um, we've got some fine arts scholarships and out-of-state um, out grants. So any student from Michigan who lives in Michigan, goes to school in Michigan, will get the out-of-state grant and alumni grant. And um, lastly, I just want to encourage you to apply and visit. You know, we, we have our own application, but we also take the Common App. Um, and I'm right at my six minute time mark, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut that off. But if you have any questions, go back and look at my information. Give me a holler, all right? Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kyle, sharing information about Franklin College. Remember, if you do have questions for any of our reps at all, please utilize the Q&A button below and to talk with them at any point along the way. Now, next, we're going to have St. Mary's College. Hi, everybody. My name is Jenna Willer, and I am happy to join you today. I'm going to talk a little bit about St. Mary's and all the awesome opportunities that you will have if you decide to join us. So first, we're going to run right through here and talk about the big picture. So we have um, over 1,600 students on our undergraduate program. And something that makes us really unique is that we are an all women's institution. So we have students coming from all over, from all different types of backgrounds, from all different types of locations, and they're finding a home at St. Mary's. So a little bit about our academic excellence. I'm actually an alum of St. Mary's myself. I graduated with a degree in the Global Studies Anthropology, a minor in Biology, and another minor in Environmental Studies. So you can tell from that mix that it is really individualized and you get to really pick from over 55 different academic programs. And we even have a student design major. So you're working closely with your professor and your academic advisor and really determining what you're passionate about, going out and, and discovering it at St. Mary's and then using it to change the world. So actually the professor there in the greenhouse picture with the polka dot sweater was um, my academic advisor. I started out as a bio student 
And she got to know me so well um, because our class sizes are pretty small. We have a, on average about 17 students in a conversational style classroom. And she knew me well enough uh, to recommend that I would love anthropology. And I was like, ah, I don't know, it's probably not really for me. I'm not even really sure what it is, um, but she was right. I tried the class, I loved it. I ended up changing majors. Uh, she wasn't real happy that I left the bio program, but that's what they're there for, right? They're really there to help us succeed and to find our uh, things that we're passionate about. And it doesn't have to be just one thing, which is what the beauty of a liberal arts program that we offer at St. Mary's is great for lots of flexibility. So you can see that we also have research opportunities. So as a liberal arts institution, you're not gonna be left out of that research opportunity and all of our students have access to that across the disciplines as well. So it's really something that allows you to truly um, take advantage of that. We have that research, we have um, cancer research, we have a program right now that was designed by one of our professors that she's getting a patent in and it helps her to uh, test medication in countries where they might not have it, uh, you know, pharmacy to go get it. So it's an affordable and fast way to test medication for people and um, some great ways to get involved on campus. We even have squirrel research. So if that's something you might be interested in, um, but lots of opportunities to get involved. And um, as a bio student, for example, I took a dance class and you think, oh, that doesn't really connect with your major, but you get that well-rounded background at St. Mary's where you're gonna try a little bit of everything and really discover what fits you best. Why a women's college, right? This is probably the question that I get asked most often. And our women are successful. They're completing a graduate degree more often and they're feeling better prepared for their job. You know, you can imagine that these sisters, these nuns came over, we're a Catholic institution, they came over from France over 175 years ago and founded St. Mary's. They were 16, 17 and 18 years old. And in a time when it wasn't very common for women to have access to education, they were like, you know what? Women need education too. And we've been around educating women ever since. So every decision on education is designed uh, around women and the decisions are made with women in mind and the way they learn best. So it's a great opportunity for you to uh, have that opportunity to have everything built around the way you learn. And we have leadership built into our curriculum so that you have the opportunity to really find your voice. You find that confidence. It's conversational style learning, as I mentioned. So that means you're going to be sharing your voice. And a lot of the classes require you to actually participate as part of your grade. So you're gonna be called upon, you're gonna be asked to speak. And it's not really about being right or wrong, although if there's you know, the bonus of being uh, right helps when you're called on, but it's really about getting confident and feeling comfortable in who you are and um, and your voice. So what are women doing? Just in my cohort alone, we actually had women who uh, went and did all kinds of cool stuff. So one of them got a Fulbright scholarship and did research in Mongolia. Another one uh, did political work in France and is now actually at the University of Notre Dame across the street from us and she is getting her master's degree. I had another one join the Peace Corps and she uh, is, was in Botswana until recently and she was helping people learn how to do um, self-sustaining food production. So lots of cool ways to be involved, to, to get passionate and go out and change the world. And uh, we have support right on campus built for you to be able to accomplish those things and it's a lifelong benefit. So if you need that support after you leave St. Mary's, you can come back and we're there for you able to help you and provide you with resources like resume writing, uh, career prep, and all that good stuff while you're a student and then uh, forever, basically. So what can I tell you about our financial aid? We have scholarships for 100% of our incoming students. So everyone is going to get a scholarship ranging between $18,000 and $30,000 per year. And that's good for all four years that you're at St. Mary's. And you uh, have a four-year promise that you're gonna be graduating on time and uh, getting out there to either go to grad school or start your career. Otherwise, we're gonna pick up the tab for you. And then of course we have need-based aid as well, which is it's individually based on your FAFSA and you have access to that uh, through us as well. So we really try to make it affordable. In fact, one of our rankings is uh, that we're in the top 50 for US News that we are a best value school, um, as well as now we are in the top three for Indiana uh, in, in nursing. So that's exciting as well. And we're proud of that. Some of our top majors include nursing, education, business, uh, psychology, and STEM. We have a really great 
engineering program as well. And as a women's college, you're not missing out on anything. You don't sacrifice anything by getting the benefits of the confidence building and the leadership at St. Mary's because we are in Notre Dame, Indiana. So we share our community with Notre Dame, the University of Notre Dame, and also um, have access to their campus as well. So it really expands your options and you have big campus feel and a small campus environment. And I see my time is up. So I'm going to go ahead and share my contact information in the chat. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much, Jenna. Next, we're going to have Loyola University Chicago. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming by today. I'm going to pull up the presentation here. One moment. Hello, my name is Cody Strolia. I'm the Missions Counselor of Chicago. If you are coming in from Michigan, which I know you are tuning in from, uh, I am your Missions Counselor at Loyola Chicago, and I'm so happy to be here to share with you a little bit more about the university. So we are Chicago's Jesuit University. Uh, we are founded in 1870, which, uh, fun fact, is just before the Chicago fire. So you can imagine how uh, long the time Loyola has been in the city of Chicago overall. overall. And at this point in time, I really want to share with you, what does it mean to be a Jesuit university? Uh, at Loyola University of Chicago, we have a strong emphasis on what we call a cure personalis, which is Latin for care for the whole person. Uh, students at Loyola are absolutely uh, driven to grow academically, but we also want students to be pushed socially, globally, uh, and, and spiritually through a holistic education. It all begins in the classroom of what we call our liberal arts uh, education foundation core curriculum. Uh, students take classes in the arts, the sciences, philosophy, and really it builds with you an opportunity uh, to learn uh, much more than just your major. Uh, we also want students to go out and to explore the world. We have many opportunities to study abroad, but for a global perspective. Uh, and this is something that I'll bring up in just a few moments here uh, later in the presentation. Uh, and finally, a really huge, huge emphasis of our university is the promotion of social justice. Many of our students that are in our programs are in the Chicagoland area getting involved uh, through different programs, such as our nursing students that are in clinical rotations throughout uh, the Chicago area. We have students in our business program who are consulting for nonprofit organizations and local organizations. We have students that are in our environmental science programs that are creating new solutions, like our students in our biodiesel lab who have uh, taken our uh, French Roy oil from our dining halls and created into our fuel source or shuttle system on campus. Uh, so if you are someone who's a problem solver, but like to take on uh, different opportunities in the uh, city environments like Chicago, Loyola could be the school for you. Speaking of our community, we have just over 12,000 undergraduate students. So if you're a student looking at all these different schools, it's good to know that we are a mid-sized school. We have the best of both worlds. You have students that are coming in from across the entire country. Uh, all 50 states are represented and over 121 countries are as well. Um, and we have quite a diverse campus. Uh, overall, we have 41% of our students coming from communities of color and we provide uh, resources through our STMA office, our Student Diversity and Multicultural Affairs office on campus who wants to not only provide you resources, but to provide you an opportunity to really call Loyola home. Uh, this is through mentorship opportunities, to workshops, to building community, uh, and this is not just inclusive of the SDMA office, but also our campus ministry uh, opportunities on campus. We have, uh, as I mentioned, an identity as a Catholic university, Jesuit Catholic University, and so 55% of our students come in as Roman Catholic, but we also have 45% of our students that represent um, other faith identities. In our second floor of our Damon Student Center, we have uh, our Hall of Faiths, where we have dedicated prayer spaces for our Hindu student organization. We have students that are uh, in our uh, Halal for Jewish uh, faith. We also have students uh, that are involved in Ecclesi and Agape, who are for other Christian denominations and have their own dedicated space uh, on campus. Uh, and if you're uh, agnostic or atheist, you're very much welcome as well. We want students to know that you are uh, provide support and we want to provide space for compassion and dialogue overall. As you see in that picture, that that was our Lakeshore campus. And here's a little bit more information of our Lakeshore campus. Uh, so we are located in the northernmost neighborhood of the city of Chicago. Uh, and the Lakeshore campus is a little bit more unique in the sense that it has traditional green spaces like you'd find on most college campuses. Uh, so if you want to have the best of both worlds with being in the city, but also having spaces to study in, as well as to get involved, the Lakeshore campus is a place for you. This is the start of the, the little experience. 
This is where all of our first year residence halls are located. This is also where we have four of our main colleges, our College of Arts and Sciences, our Marsalnia School of Nursing, our Parks and School of Health Sciences and Public Health, as well as our School of Environmental Sustainability. This is where you'll take a lot of your core classes as well as simply get involved and meet friends and get going in college. Um, we also, though, have another campus called the Water Tower Campus. And the Water Tower Campus is located downtown uh, off of Michigan Avenue. And this is home to our Clone School of Business, our School of Communication, School of Social Work, and School of Education. Uh, so many students that want to have an opportunity down in the city of Chicago also have this to take advantage of uh, in their classroom. But not only are you limited to the Water Tower Campus and Lakeshore Campus, we also have many opportunities uh, that you can, pr can uh, pursue beyond a study abroad in addition to uh, through our academic programs. And so I do want to mention here that our academic programs, uh, you have an average class size of 26 in addition to a student to faculty ratio of 14 to 1. So many students find that's similar to what you have in high school. And our faculty members are experts in the field. They want to find opportunities to provide you with opportunities outside the classroom from research to internships. Uh, and that's one of the best aspects of being in the city of Chicago. Uh, when you apply to Loyola, you can apply for any of our majors overall. The main two that I always recommend to think about early on is nursing and engineering science, but you're always welcome to think about and change majors while you're at the university when you talk to your academic advisor. As I'm pulling up the other next slide here, this is taking just one moment. I do want to touch again on study abroad. And so as I mentioned, we have 150 programs in 70 countries worldwide to pick from uh, to go study abroad. You can go for a few weeks, you can go for a semester, you can go for a full year. And we even have two of our own main centers, John Fletcher Rome Center in Rome, Italy, as well as our Vietnam Center in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Uh, many students love this because you can take on-site courses at these locations. And this is a really great opportunity to learn uh, firsthand when you're in a different country. And while we're continuing to go on, I want to mention that we're very strong emphasis on hands-on learning in addition to study abroad. Uh, for those of you that are looking for opportunities outside the classroom, we actually require you to take on one of five different areas of public performance to, to engage learning, to academic internships. Um, they are actually in the top 20 worldwide for this opportunities as well. And so I've noticed that my time is closing up. If you are looking for applications on a website in addition to the Coalition of Co Common Applications, uh, main idea, apply early. And if you have questions about this overall, you'll find my information coming up in the last slide. After our scholarships, you see 98% of our students receive grants uh, or scholarships overall. And here's my info overall. So thank you so much for having me, and I hope to see you on campus soon. Thank you so much, University of Illinois in Chicago. Before we finish up, we want to make sure you get some parting advice from these reps to kind of get yourself ready for the process and continue on as well. And if you all could just answer this question and give some advice in order to present it, what would you tell us? What kind of advice would you give someone going through the college search process? I would say definitely don't be afraid to look outside of what is normal. Don't be afraid to kind of like take that risk. Look at that school that maybe not everybody is going to. I, what I love about these sessions is we get to learn about tons of different types of institutions, so public, private, small, large. And so take that jump. Um, I was someone who from Washington State, went to a small private college outside of St. Louis, didn't know a single person there, and I don't regret it at all. So just step out and find something that works for you. I would say to take advantage of all the resources colleges have to offer um, in terms of just telling you about the college. I think right now it might be difficult for um, some of you to visit campuses, but a lot of colleges have a ton of online resources for you to start with. It's a great first step to knowing if a college might be a, a right fit for you. So explore their websites, look at their online videos, their social media, someone mentioned earlier. All of those online resources is a really great first step. Yeah, my advice would be, uh, just don't go to a school because you have friends from high school going to that school. Um, I graduated high school about six years ago, and that's something that I was dead set on going to a school that all my friends were going to until I realized that wasn't the school that I wanted to go to. Um, so visit the schools that you have interest in, whether it be a small school, large school, medium school, and have the programs and facilities that you're looking for. Um, and make sure you go on those college visits. Those are great ways to know that this school clicks, this school's right for you, and which ones aren't. Um, I always say, you know, cast a wide net, you know, apply to, you know, a couple of different schools. You never know what you're going to see out there. Apply early, um, just with scholar, uh, priority scholarship deadlines, you know, get those in before November just to cover your tail. 
um, and absolutely get on campuses because that's really the, the way to know for sure. Um, I visited Franklin on a field trip my sophomore year and fell in love with the place and like knew then. So get on campus and just find the place that feels right. For me, I would say the biggest thing is to reach out to your admission counselors at multiple schools, you know, ask them. That's what our job is. That's what we're doing here today is giving you all that great information. But we want to talk to you. We want to share about our schools. We're excited to help you learn more and discover if we're a good fit for you. So don't be afraid to reach out to us, whether it's uh, email or text or phone. And also please check your email and your texts and your phones because we're trying to reach out to you too. I completely agree uh, with that last statement. I think the best thing you can do is reach out to your uh, admissions office for the universities that you're looking at. Uh, you'll be surprised to see how many opportunities there will be for visits, uh, whether that be with chat opportunities to connecting with students. Um, we always want to provide you with an individualized experience and hopefully with that, you'll be able to connect with a student and learn a little bit more about what makes that university special in that way. All right, thank you so much for your great information and thank you all so much for attending this college fair. Remember when you leave this window, there'll be a quick four question survey. There's also more sessions you can attend today as well. So Representative, thanks so much for giving your time today and thanks so much for coming. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you all for everything. Have a good one.